Hey, what's up guys? I'm Hop. Thanks for tuning in to TFB TV. You've probably already noticed that ammunition is getting a little bit scarce lately. I'm having a hard time finding it. When I do, it's costing me about twice as much as it was just a couple months ago. That is a big problem because shooting is a perishable skill. If you don't use it, you lose it. Right now, it's kind of difficult to go out and shoot 200 rounds every other week to stay copacetic on your carry piece. So, I'm at the range today with a single box of Federal 9mm Syntec. I'm going to share with you guys a couple of tips for how to maximize a range day with limited ammunition. Then we're going to go ahead and shoot some low round count pistol drills that should be accessible to just about anybody. Stick around. Alright, you guys are going to have to sit through the lecture before you get to the shooting. Although if you want to just skip ahead, I'll go ahead and put some timestamps in the video description. So you can just fast forward to the good stuff. Tip number one for shooting on a budget is don't shoot the big green silhouette targets. These things are way too big. This is just a waste of ammunition. Cannot tell you the number of times I've seen people post pictures online of one of these big green silhouette targets just completely riddled with holes and they're very proud that they shot a whole box of 50 rounds and got them all on paper. It's not very impressive. Basically all you did was waste 50 rounds and honestly you wasted a lot of paper because one of these is so big you could probably get 10 good bullseyes on it. Seriously, I've, I've never met anybody this big in real life. I mean, I've seen them on, like, you know, TV shows about people who have a disorder, but it's unbelievable. What you should shoot instead is something like this. This is a sight-in target, so it's one piece of paper with five bullseyes on it. You would get a lot more useful training out of shooting five five-round groups into this piece of paper than you would out of shooting 50 rounds into that huge green silhouette. As you can see, we have mildly inconvenienced this massive oversized attacker. We have also, via the magic of collateral damage, killed every other member of our imaginary household. Tip number two is to make sure that you get data with every single shot that you take. That means that you either need to be registering hits on paper, you need to be mixing in your shooting with other actions like reloads, holstering, drawing, that kind of stuff, or you need to be shooting on a timer. So if you're shooting steel targets, you're really only getting Boolean feedback. Yes, I hit the target, or no, I didn't hit the target. It's not really feasible to check your groups afterwards, so you should be mixing in that shooting of steel with draws or transitions, sight pictures. Make sure you're running it on the timer as well. If you're shooting paper, you should be shooting low round counts into small group sizes instead of just blasting away at a massive silhouette. That way you're getting data about where your shots are landing. Ideally, you're getting all of this data at the same time. There are a lot of drills out there that have you putting shots on paper, on a timer and they're mixing in things like draws and reloads at the same time. If you really want to get serious about shooting, I would highly recommend that you invest in a real shot timer. This is a Competition Electronics Pocket Pro 1. It's kind of an older shot timer. Usually you can find these for about a hundred bucks, which is fairly expensive. You could also use the Splits app for Android. I've been using that one for a long time. That one's free. I'm sure there is an equivalent for Apple phones out there. If you know of one that's actually pretty good, go ahead and post it in the comments. You can pin that for other people to see. The takeaway from all this, though, is that at the end of a string of fire or at the end of a drill, you should have some data to show for it. You should have a lesson that you can take away. If you've got data from a shot timer or data from groups on paper, that tells you what you need to work on, and that's how you know what drills you should be focusing on in the future. Two, six, one. Again, suboptimal draw, so I spend a little more time on that first shot, so... The final tip is to slow down. There are some really good drills out there like the Bear Standard or the Fast Drill that have you drawing on a timer, putting groups on paper, and also reloading all within the same string. Those are great drills for practice and they're also good for showing you where your skill level is. However, particularly the Bear Standard has you shooting 13 rounds in under 10 seconds. You run a couple of those, you're going to be out of ammo really fast. Barely in. 7.56 seconds. Oh man, I really rushed that last one. I probably didn't have to. In our current climate where ammunition is very scarce, I don't think now is a good time to be shooting bare standards. All right, that's enough talking. Now it's time for the good stuff. So like I said, I have got a single 50 round box of nine millimeter Syntec. It's a 150 grain total synthetic jacket. We're not going to shoot all 50 rounds. We're going to shoot half of it. So we're going to shoot three drills for 25 rounds. 
The first one is the FSP 9 at 9. That one's going to train slow fire as well as weak hand only and strong hand only shooting. Then we're going to shoot something called the FSP Drill 1. That's going to be some uh, rapid splits. That's going to train rapid sight acquisition and split times. And lastly, we're going to finish it off with the test, which is the classic 10 shots at 10 yards in 10 seconds. And that one's going to train throttle control. I'm going to be shooting these drills with a Glock 17 equipped with a red dot. The catch is that this is a Rockslide USA Gen 3 Glock 17 slide running on a Gen 4 frame using a Strike Industries slide adapter plate. This is using a Gen 4 barrel with a Gen 3 recoil spring. The red dot is a Holozone 407. So hopefully this will actually work pretty well. Also, this is zeroed at 10 yards with 124 grain ammunition. We're going to be shooting the Federal 150 grain, so we could have a little bit of a shift there. Let's go ahead and do it. First drill is the FSP 9 at 9. We've got a B8 repair center size target set up at 9 yards. Going to start with three shots, slow fire, weak hand only. Go to three shots, slow fire, strong hand only. Finish it off with three shots, slow fire, freestyle. So two handed. Let's see how we do. Oh boy, I'm shaky. Whew. Switching over to strong hand only. Oh, right down the shirt. Classic Gen 3 Glock ejection pattern because we're using a Gen 3 slide. Ah, oh, geez. All right, three shots, freestyle. Empty. Let's take a look at it. So here you have the nine at nine. Everything looking pretty good, except for my first two shots of uh, weak hand only. I was having a really hard time keeping those stable. Everything else, pretty decent. This is not a fantastic result, particularly because I'm shooting a full-size pistol using a red dot. It should be a lot better than that. Let's move on to drill number two. All right, next drill is the FSP Drill 1. This one is going to be three strings of fire, two shots each on the target at four yards. This is going to be from the low ready on a shot timer. Part time is two seconds. So it's gonna be present, fire two rounds, three times. One, six, five, and shanked one low. Because I uh, forgot that we're using a red dot. One, five, one, a little better. Aiming a little higher up on the target instead of way down at the bottom. Last string. One point four eight. Let's take a look at that. So here's our target. As you can see, all the shots are in except for one. That makes this a fail. I started off actually aiming pretty much right at the largest part of the gray, which is the target area. And uh, as it turns out when you're using a red dot at four yards, it's not particularly a good idea. So I finished out by aiming more around up here. All right, our last roll of the day is the test. It's the classic ten shots in ten seconds at ten yards from the low ready. Seven point one four. Definitely could have slowed that one down a little bit. Here's our classic, the test. Seven point one four seconds. There's a couple ways you can score the test. The classic way is pass fail, where it's all the shots in the black, and then you're just trying to go for the fastest possible time. The second way is to go for par score, where you're trying to go with a 90% score in the shortest amount of time possible. And then the final way is to use up as much of the 10 seconds as you can and go for a high score. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five in the nine ring. This one is actually breaking the line of the 10 ring. So that counts as 10. That means that we've got either a pass out of 100 because we've got them all in the black, or we've got a 95 out of 100 if we're going for par score. 
And the final way to score it is basically to disregard the timer. As long as we got it under the 10 seconds, that no longer matters, and all we're looking at is the score of 95 out of 100. So that was three drills in a total of 25 rounds, which is pretty good return on investment. It taught me a lot about what I need to be practicing if I'm going to try to start shooting pistols with red dots. It also gave us a chance to function test this bizarre Franken Glock. We didn't have to shoot 50 rounds into a big green silhouette to do the function test and then switch over to shooting drills. We just did it all in one go. Hope you guys found those tips and those drills useful. Pretty much anybody should be able to shoot those drills even at an indoor range. So they don't require holster work, they don't require movement, uh, they don't require reloads, and the shooting is cadence fire more than it is rapid fire. So if you'd like to check out some more pistol drills, there's going to be a link in the video description to a Dropbox folder with a whole bunch of stuff from FSP. I recommend that you check it out. Thanks for watching. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors, Venture Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We really appreciate their support, so check them out if you'd like. We are also supported directly via Subscribestar and Patreon. You can find links to both of those in the video description, as well as to our Discord server, which is where all the cool kids hang out and talk about anime, or so I'm told. See you next time.